Hi friends, welcome back. I'm Elaine and I'm living with autoimmune disease. Today's topic comes from one of you. So thank you to the friend that suggested this for today's video. I'm actually excited to talk about this. This is a very good question and I hope I have insightful answers. And I asked if there was any topics that you all would like me to talk about. Somebody suggested that I talk about my best and worst experience with medications. If I've ever gotten conflicting information from different doctors about my illness or medications, and if I've ever disagreed with a doctor and how I guess I approach that, let's get into it. I think we all have a best and worst experience story with medication because I think we've all encountered those really good experiences with medications and the really bad experiences with medications. Hopefully the good outweighs the bad, but if you're like me, those bad experiences are completely memorable. I feel like we should start with the bad news first, that way we can redeem it with the good news. In yesterday's video about my best advice that I could give you be your own statistics, I talked about when I was allergic to my first biologic. That was a very memorable experience for me. I was kind of newly in this autoimmune disease world. I didn't know a lot about the medications and my first biologic I ever received was infusion therapy. I'm gonna tell you the name of the medication, but it is not to scare any of you. And please remember, this is just my experience. People are allergic to different things. So just because I had an allergic reaction doesn't mean that you will. And if you are suggested this medication, please just ask your provider any questions that you have and please don't use my experience as something to decide to take this medication or not. When I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis by my primary care physician, I was sent to a rheumatologist. Like all of you, that wait to see the rheumatologist was kind of a long wait. It wasn't that long because I'm in a metropolitan city, but it was a good two and a half months. And I started on methotrexate first. That is not my bad experience. Methotrexate did not work for me fully and we had to add a biologic. The rheumatologist I was seeing at the time had an infusion room in his office and he was administering Remicade. I wasn't given an opportunity at what biologic I wanted to try. I pretty much was just told that I was going to add Remicade to my medication. I was extremely naive. I didn't know a lot about biologics. I didn't know a lot about rheumatoid arthritis and I certainly just wanted to feel better. He explained to me that I would go to his office and receive infusion therapy there and I trusted him. I probably don't have the figures exactly right, but I wanna say about six months into Remicade after my loading doses and when I started my maintenance doses, I went for my infusion and within probably 30, 40 minutes into the infusion, I started to itch all over. I didn't understand really what was going on. I just thought, oh, that's weird. I, I must just be getting hot. But I remember the soles of my feet were itching. My arms started to itch. And I guess I started to itch a lot. Because I was in an infusion room with other patients, there was somebody sitting across from me. The lady sitting across from me asked me, are, are you okay? I guess she noticed how much I was itching. And I was like, I, I think I'm okay. But I guess at that point, I started to get like a rash all over me and I couldn't see my face. I guess my face turned kind of really red. And the lady across from me said, I, I don't think you're okay. And she called the nurse. At that point, I started to not be able to breathe very well and my blood pressure started to spike. The nurse didn't handle it in a way that felt comforting to me. She kind of panicked. And when you're a patient, you don't want the person that's supposed to help you get out of the situation panic. The infusion was stopped. I was given Benadryl. I had to somehow make it home and figure out in my head what happened. That was probably my worst experience with medication and it really emotionally scarred me for my future going forward. I wanted to get better, but I was so afraid to try another biologic after that because I was so afraid that was gonna happen again. I was very naive. I mean, this is probably nine, 10 months into my journey, so, I didn't know what to do and I didn't know the exact questions to ask. My best experience with medication, let's, let's redeem the bad with the good. My best experience with medication 
I was diagnosed with bile salt malabsorption when I was 20 and I was literally starving to death. I know it's hard to believe that now because I'm on prednisone and I'm carrying prednisone weight, but I was extremely thin and my GI system did not work. My malabsorption made it so I didn't absorb nutrients from my food. I spent a year undiagnosed and nobody knew what to do with me and I literally was a walking skeleton, pretty much housebound at that point. I was sent to UCSF in the Bay Area so they could investigate what was going on and try to help me. They figured out what was going on and at that time, 27 years ago, there was an experimental medication for bile salt malabsorption. The name of the medication was Questrin. Some of you might know this medication as cholesteramine. So the way they explained it is that I would drink this medication with my food and it would collect the bile salts from my food and my system would remember to grab the bile salts back instead of just letting them go out my system so I could get some nutrients from food. This is not scientific. This is how I interpreted it as a 20 year old. It was experimental at the time, which meant they didn't know if it was gonna work or not work. I started the question with my meals three times a day. I still was just eating rice and bread to survive, but it worked. It worked for me. I started to stabilize. I started to gain some weight back. It, it, it was a miracle. And that was such a good experience with that medication. And here, 27 years later, the experimental medicine I started at UCSF, I'm still on. That medication literally changed my life literally saved my life. The other experience that I had that was good with medication was Cellcept. I was very sick in 2016 with the beginning of my scleroderma journey, throwing up whole food, skin that was tightening and it looked like my hands were dipped in acid, short of breath, just really, really sick. And we changed my methotrexate to Cellcept at that time and after I worked out the side effects of the cell set, which took me about three months, and there is a video if you're wondering about my experience with cell set, and I saw an improvement in my symptoms, like a good improvement. And when I had to hold that medication for particular things, there are certain times I had to hold that medication, I started to regress. And I can honestly say that cell set makes a difference in my journey. Is it a miracle? Does it cure me? Like the question was a miracle? N no, but would I be a lot sicker without Cellcept? Yes. The next part of the question was, do I ever get conflicting information from my doctors about my illness or medications? This one's a little harder to answer because there really is a non-answer for this one and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm probably not the person to address this, but no, I don't get conflicting information because the way it is, is I'm a patient at a teaching hospital and all my specialists work together. So rheumatology, dermatology, gastroenterology, hematology, cardiology, you name the ology, but they all work together. And my rheumatologist is the quarterback and everybody reports back to him and they all work together with my medications, with my diagnoses. And I'm actually lucky enough that a lot of people don't have this, but my rheumatologist also oversees my primary care. So nobody's really giving conflicting information and there's not really conflicting information about my medication or my diagnosis or illness. I know that's not available to everybody, so I know I'm blessed in that way. And it's nice to have people that agree and really work together for my care. So it's really a non-answer and I'm sorry, but I don't have any experience with conflicting information. The last part of the question was, did I ever disagree with a doctor? Yes, I did. My first rheumatologist after the allergic reaction to Remicade told me there was nothing else they could do for me. He pretty much wanted to throw prednisone at me and that was it. And this is nine, 10 months into my journey. It didn't feel right. I was naive, but then in a sense, I knew something wasn't right. And I felt very depressed about the information that he was giving me at nine, 10 months into this diagnosis. I didn't know where to really go from there 
but I knew I disagreed. Talking to a friend at work about it, she could tell that something was up. And I mean, this is a big life-changing thing to have someone tell you there's nothing else they can do for you. And you're literally in the worst pain of your life and your mobility is suffering. I mean, you all know how this feels, you get it. Nobody at 32 years old wants to feel like there's no other hope for you. My friend really pushed me to get a second opinion. And when I say really pushed me, I mean, she found me a doctor to get a second opinion. I felt so hesitant to make that second opinion call, but it literally saved my life and it saved my mobility. And my whole journey today is different because I sought that second opinion. I credit that friend for a lot because I'm not sure that I could have done it on my own. And I was very naive and I didn't know where to go. And honestly, we hadn't lived in Los Angeles that long. So I didn't realize that I'd have to travel outside of our city to the actual teaching hospital to meet with a rheumatologist there, but I'm glad I did. And when I met with him, he told me there were a lot more biologics than Remicade. There were other things to try at that point. There was Embril on the market and there was Humera. There were a lot of other options than just calling it quits and giving me prednisone. I think sometimes going to a teaching hospital is a good idea because they're up on new kinds of treatment or they know the new kinds of research coming out. And I didn't have that before. But yeah, I did disagree and I sought that second opinion. And I'm still with that doctor today because that doctor gave me hope. That doctor continues to give me hope. And I feel like that is so very important, at least for me in this journey. I need someone to give me hope and lift me up. There's already a lot of hurt and fear in this disease that having a physician who gives you hope or helps you see something in a different light is actually a blessing. So thank you to the person that suggested this for a topic. I think this is a great topic and I'm glad to share with you all and hopefully you all got something out of this. If you all like this topic too and you want to encourage the person who left it, please give it a thumbs up. Let them know that this was a good topic. If you all have any topics that you would like me to discuss, if you already left it, I do, I do have it on a list, but if you have anything that you haven't left, leave me a comment down below. I will answer your question in a future video. And if you're scared to leave a comment, don't be scared. This is a great community. If you haven't yet subscribed and you would like to come along on my adventure, I'd love to have you. The more friends, the more better. Hit the subscribe button. My adventure is sometimes fun. It's sometimes medical, but it is always an adventure. And until my next adventure, go have yours.